Welcome to the chapter 23 assignment video. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through the eight uh, questions that are in the chapter 23 assignment set. I'm gonna help you understand what is required for each question and maybe some of the uh, some of the more difficult parts of the question so you can work it out and, and complete the assignment, hopefully in a relatively pain-free manner. So let's go ahead and dive into question one. So question one, we're provided a fixed budget up top here, right? So your, your numbers may be different than my numbers, but mine, uh, so we have a fixed budget, uh, assuming a 12,000 unit um, month, right? Or a year, first quarter of the year. So we're doing quarters. So 12,000 units for the first quarter. Okay, so that's fixed. And then down here, now what we have to do is we have to turn this fixed budget into a flexible budget, right? So this, this middle column over to the right on our fixed uh, budget, the 12,000 units is actually gonna be the same numbers that are in our fixed budget because it's the same amount of units, right? 12,000. But what we have to do is we have to convert our variable cost to per unit cost and then multiply them back into the various uh, levels of produ production, so 10,000 and 14,000, for example. And, and then we have to divide up our variable and fixed. So let's, let's divide up our variable and fixed to begin with. Uh, so, so sales is on top right here with the fixed budget. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to move sales down here to be our first row as well. Okay. So then, then we have to ask ourselves, okay, what's variable and what's fixed up here? Uh, so er everything that's going to decrease or increase as production decreases or increases is going to be variable. Anything that's going to be remain the same, no matter what productions or sales is, is going to be a fixed, right? So let's let's do variable cost here. So uh, first item, direct materials, right? Obviously that'll go up and down depending on how much, uh, what our level of production and sales are. Um, we got our direct uh, labor is also going to be part of that, and then our uh, production supplies. Supplies are going to go up and down, depending on how, how many we make and sell. Sales commission will go up and down. That's a variable. And then packaging. Okay, so that's that's our uh, variable. Now let's look down at fixed. Fixed cost. So we, we know that uh, like our plant manager, all these that aren't variable are going to be fixed. Um, advertising, right? Uh, a lot of these admin expenses are going to be, all those are going to be fixed as well. So we're going to throw those in there. So let's uh, go down here. It's going to be plant manager salary. Advertising. Admin salaries. Uh, depreciation will be one of them. That'll be fixed. Insurance. Right, and that is going to have a um, rent. So the total okay. fixed cost that so, is going to be the uh, same amount jump over, as up in the, uh, up so in the we, fixed This is the first column, right? We jump budget. over two right. columns. So we're going to take column right here. All these total amounts total from fixed, fixed cost. budget that that is going to have. Fixed cost. Plug them down here into this uh, total fixed cost column, and then they'll be the same all the way across ten thousand, twelve thousand, fourteen thousand units. All right, so so the trick now with sales and variable cost is, is going to be, first we have to figure out the per unit amount. So that means the total uh, sales for the sales line and then the total cost for the variable cost will be divided by the fixed cost units, 12,000. That'll give us our per unit amount. That is then going to be multiplied by the flexible budget unit amount. 10,000 will be multiplied by the per unit amounts. 
then 12,000. 12,000 will be the same amount that we have up here in fixed, right? Same level. And then the 14,000. And then we'll add all those up. Uh, don't forget to, to also uh, throw in the, the total columns here. So we're going to have a uh, contribution margin there and total fixed cost here with uh, our income from operations. So that's so that's the uh, there there you have the first question. Okay. So now we'll go, let's go on to question two. Okay. So question two is going to uh, be set up in this way. So we're going to have our uh, fixed budget. Okay. So it says here we have a fixed budget uh, performance report. Uh, and then we have, so we have fixed and variable expenses. Actual expenses include 46,700 in fixed expenses. So now we're, what we're supposed to do is we're supposed to pre prepare a flexible budget performance report, right? Showing any variances. Okay, so we start off here with our sales. It's gonna be kind of the same format. It's gonna be more of a summary and then our variable, right? Then we'll have our, below we'll have our fixed and our actual income here. Okay, so those, those are our rows that we're gonna fill out. Okay. And now we're gonna have, uh, so, so our actual results we have, right? So our actual sales, our uh, total expenses are gonna be here, but uh, it's not gonna be, they're gonna be divided up between variable and fixed. So our fixed costs, our fixed expenses will be here. So it's gonna be this total expense line minus our fixed expense will give us our vari uh, variable on the actual side, right? And then our fixed cost will be uh, will be what it says up here, our actual expenses. Okay, these are on this is on the actual column. So the flexible So yeah, the, so the way we're going to be able to do the sales is we're going to take our here's our sales in dollars budgeted, divide that by our budgeted units and that will give us our per unit amount of sales. Then we just have to multiply that back into the 11,200. So it's gonna look like this, right? So it's gonna be our 440,000 divided by 8,800 equals $50, right? So that's our, that's our per, u, per unit sales amount. And then we're gonna multiply the per unit sales amount back into the actual results, which is 11,200, and that's 56, or 5, 560,000, which is actually the same as the amount as the actual. So we actually have to calculate it, but in the end, there's no variance there. Now we have to kind of do the same thing to our variable and our fixed expenses, right? So here's the budgeted amounts that we have up here, right? So we can take the total variable expenses divided by the units. That'll give us our variable expense per unit. Multiply that by the actual units, the 11,200. That'll give us our new flexible budget variable amount Fixed expenses are going to be the same as, as this up here, right? That's fixed expenses, budgeted fixed expenses per unit. Actually, we we, we got to, um, yeah, that'll be, that'll be that. So that is our fixed budgeted expenses. Okay. All right. Now we need to, we need to figure out what the variances are in whole dollars or in dollars and then if it's favorable or unfavorable mark it down there. Okay, so let's let's go ahead and go on to question number 3. Okay. So what we're going to do here is we're figuring out the standard cost per unit for number 3. Okay. 
Okay, so uh, so what we need to do is we need to figure out the, it, the, so the standard cost for direct materials per unit is going to be the standard quantity times the standard price, right? So basically it's, it's gonna be the seven times seven, right? So which is 49, okay? Direct labor again is gonna be the standard quantity of hours worked, three times the standard uh, by our standard rate in this case because it is labor, right? So it's gonna be our, our three times 17 so it's going to be 41 in this, or 51 in this case, okay? And then our overhead is going to be the same thing. So it's going to be hours times uh, overhead rate. And so in this case, it's going to be 36. So it'll total up for us at the bottom. So it's just so, so really we're just using these numbers right here in the standard, right? Not any of this actual stuff over to the right, okay? Okay, so just real quick to kind of walk you through the total cost variance. So the total cost variance uh, is gonna be, we're gonna compare standard and actual, right? Total cost, we're not gonna break it down into uh, materials or labor. And so the way we do this is to get the actual cost is, is pretty easy, right? So to get the actual cost, it's just gonna be our pounds, right? With direct material multiplied by the dollar per pound. For the labor, it's gonna to be total hours multiplied by the rate. And then you take the, the two numbers that you get from, from these and you add it, add it to the overhead. So your direct materials, direct labor, overhead, all added up, that gives you your actual, uh, total actual manufacturing cost, right? And so then, then what we do is uh, we need to get the the standard cost, or it's kind of like a flexible budget is the way it works, right? So what we do is we take the units manufactured, the actual units, right? And then we multiply that by the pounds of direct materials and then multiply that by the dollar per pound. That'll give us our flexible standard, flexible budget for direct materials. So then we take our units again, our actual units, and we multiply that by our direct labor hours and then the direct labor rate. That gives us the, the, our flexible amount for that direct labor. And then we do the same thing for uh, our uh, for our overhead, right? 7,600 in this case, multiplied by three hours, multiplied by $12 per hour. So then, then we've got our flexible our total standard manufacturing cost. So we take the difference now that we've calculated both actual and standard, take the difference and we have to say, okay, is that, what's the, what's the cost difference and is it uh, favorable, uh, no variance or unfavorable, right? All right, so actual minus actual minus standard, and uh, then we gotta figure out what the favorable or unfavorable on that is, okay? Now we're going on to question number four. All right, so for question number four, it's set up in a, a similar format, kind of the format that I drew out on the lecture video. So we're gonna have actual to actual over here, right on on the left side so we're going to have actual quantity and actual price and then over on the right side we're going to have st uh, standard quantity and standard price and then in the middle we're going to mix them so it's going to be actual quantity and standard price okay all right so so, and, and the way we then uh, figure that out is actual quantity is going to be uh, this number here, right? So that's the actual quantity used. So we'll go ahead and plug that in. We're doing direct materials in this case. We're not doing labor for this one. We're doing direct materials. So this will be our quantity. 
um, our actual price as well will be this nine dollars and ten cents right your numbers may be different but they'll be in the same spot really if you look kind of location wise and what they are called okay so now we know what our actual quantity and actual price is we can also plug in our actual quantity uh, here in the middle as well right so now we need to do the standard quantity and the standard price okay so in order to get our uh, standard quantity right so we have the standard quantity here of of six pounds right so our our total standard quantity though we need to we need to flex it to the actual uh, level of production so our six pounds times our 7500 units is going to be our actual standard total standard quantity and that that number will then plug in there into standard quantity standard pricing is going to just be our our nine dollars straight up nine dollars is our standard price okay so now now we've got it all and then our nine dollars will be in the middle for standard price as well now we multiply each set together the sets of three right actual to actual actual to standard and then standard to standard okay so that'll give us uh, a number here in in for each of the three um groupings and then we'll compare the groupings all right so so starting with the left uh we're going to compare actual to actual and actual to standard right so that's going to be our comparison and um and then we're going to have a comparison between actual to standard and standard to standard uh, on the right okay so th these numbers that we're going to get as we compare the three groupings are going to come down into uh, these rows so the very first one on the left actual actual to actual compared to actual to standard is going to be our direct materials price variance okay and then the the one on the right is going to be our direct materials quantity variance right so and then we have to say what the variance is and if it's favorable or unfavorable uh, then in the very bottom is our total direct materials variance okay so hopefully this helps and then now we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and go on to question five so question question five is set up in a similar fashion to question four right but instead in this instance we're actually doing direct labor now so we're going to be using the second row right this information and just to just to be clear our uh, level of production our units manufactured is going to be maybe a different amount than what we had in our last uh, question as well so so direct labor right so we're going to lay it out in the same format right so this is actual instead of quantity it's hours and then our actual rate actual hours and then our standard rate right so these are standards standard hours standard rate okay so our actual hours are we're gonna we're gonna plug in actual hours are gonna be right here right uh, actual rate as well will be right here. This is actual rate, our 17,040, uh, or 17, I'm sorry, $17 and 40 cents is our actual rate. Okay, so now, and then we go ahead and plug our actual hours over there as well as 17,500. So now for our standard, so so standard, we got a flex, remember. Two hours here is our, actu is our standard hours, but we need to multiply that by our units. Okay, and that'll give us our total standard hours. And then our standard rate will just be our $17 per hour. Okay, we can plug that in and multiply it down. Again, these rows down here are gonna be, uh, it's gonna be our, instead of direct materials, it's gonna be our direct labor, right? rate is going to be the beginning and efficiency will be our next row and then the very bottom one will be our direct material uh, direct 
total direct labor variance. There we go. So we'll fill in, we just fill those in. Okay, so now we're on six, six and seven are together. This is going to be a little bit more uh, involved because there's two and one, but it's going to be laid out in the same format. Okay. So we're going to compute the direct materials price and quantity variance. So this, we're going back to direct materials again for this one. Okay. So we're going to have our actual quantity, actual price, actual quantity. You probably got this uh, down by now, so that'll be good standard price and then uh, standard quantity and standard price. Okay, so now let's look back up into our information. So where are we gonna find our actual quantity and our actual uh, pricing, right? In, in this information, it's not laid out in the same format, right? So it's gonna be a little different. So we have our production level. So this is the 3,700 bookshelves, so that's good. Okay, and we have our uh, our actual quantity here, right? So this is 2,100 board feet. Okay, so that's our that's our actual quantity right there. This is an actual. This is total uh, cost. And so, in order to get our actual price, we need to divide our total cost by our board feet. Right, that'll get us give us the cost per board feet. Okay, so then that's actual, uh, that's an actual price. Now, in order to get our standard quantity, what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, what's our standard board feet? Six board feet, right? Right there, that's our standard, multiplied by our units of production, right? So we're going to flex it up to that, come up with our standard quantity. Our standard price is going to be our uh, $12.70, that's what it's going to be, straight up, okay? So that'll be that, and then that'll then our uh, rows down here will be exactly like our other direct material row that we had before. Now our number seven down here at the bottom is going to be some, some work, uh, some worksheets, that were, or some journal entries, I'm sorry, that we're going to be doing here, okay? So our journal entries, we're gonna have uh, two of them, okay? And the, the way they're gonna be laid out is, first we're gonna do a journal entry to prepare, uh, or we're gonna do, we're gonna prepare the journal entry for the charges and direct materials cost to work in process inventory, okay? Okay, and so so we've got materials coming out of direct, uh, uh, out of raw materials is the idea, right? We have raw materials and they're going into work in process, and then we have to adjust for any variances that we have. Okay, and, and the the real trick is up up here we have uh, that it says we record standards costs a, as we produce, so um, we need to change from standard to uh, actual is why we have to do these adjusting entries. So this is an actual adjusting entry here. So our first uh, row or our first account that we're going to be using, we're going to, um, so our debit, debiting an asset will increase it, right? So our inventories are assets. So the inventory account that receives the actual materials will be debited. So we're going from raw materials to work in process. And so work in process will receive the, the inventory amount. So that's our debit, okay? And that is going to be the, that's gonna to be to the tune of our standard amount, right? So whatever is up here at the top, so standard times standard, standard quantity times standard price will be the amount that goes into this debit. Okay. So that comes from, if we go down here a couple of lines, that, that is going to be coming out of, uh, this is raw materials, right? That's where it's gonna be coming out of. Okay. And so our raw materials um, 
amount is actually going to be actual to actual. That's going to be a credit. So whatever our actual to actual uh, calculation is up here will be the number that fits down into this raw materials inventory. So now the reconciling part, right? So these don't balance. So what we need to do is we need to balance using our variances. So the variances we calculated up here on these rows, right? So the, so the first variance is gonna be our uh, price variance, direct material price variance. The second one's gonna be our direct materials quantity variance. Okay, and so they're, the way they're gonna lay, out, lay into the, uh, the journal entry here is we're gonna actually have our price variance uh, direct materials price variance is going to be our debit and our direct materials quantity variance will be our credit okay in that so that's how they're going to be that's how they're going to be laid out uh, and so so enter the debits before the credits just make sure you do that and it'll be lined out for you okay so the second journal entry that we're gonna do is going to be, uh, so, it, so it says assume Hart's materials variances are, on, are the only variances accumulated in the accounting period and that they are immaterial. Prepare the adjusting journal entry to close. So we're closing. We're closing the variance accounts, right? Okay, and so what we're gonna do is our debit is actually going to be our direct materials quantity variance because that was our credit before so we're going to debit it right it's going to be a credit here and then our and our uh, credit is going to be our direct materials uh, price right quantity is our debit price is our credit in especially in this case so the, the way it works is this is the way it reconciles depending on if your uh, variance is favorable or unfavorable one way or the other it could be a debit both could be debits both could be credits or it could be vice versa for either one in this case it's this is the way it's gonna be laid out for you okay so our our direct materials quantity variance will be the debit price will be the credit and then we're going to use our cost of goods sold as the uh, the plug to get this the balance right, and that that will that should be a credit. The difference between these two that we plug in before will be their credit to balance things out. So that's that's our uh, number seven. A little little complicated, but hopefully you'll get it. Now we're going to do our last uh, question here. So our last question is number eight. And this is going to be based around our our uh, overhead, right? So we're going to be doing some stuff with overhead here. Okay, so we're we're going to do some uh, overhead variances with uh, this number eight. And so the the very first thing that it has you do is it says compute the predetermined overhead. Uh, application rate per hour for variable overhead fixed overhead and total overhead at 65% capacity so we're going to be using this middle column here right so 65% right there is what we're going to be using okay and so the, the way we're going to do that is is we're going to use uh, first we're going to grab our total expected overhead right so that's going to be our total expected overhead Okay, and uh, we're gonna divide that by our uh, d -d 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 total um, hours here, our, uh, stand our total expected hours, 780, okay? So that right there is gonna get us the uh, total overhead cost, right? Per a predetermined overhead rate, right? So, so that's the very bottom row that we just calculated there that we're just talking about. Now, now do the variable and the fixed, right? So the variable and fixed, and we can do this two different ways, right? So here's the variable, and we're now we're gonna 
Now we're gonna divide those as well by this, by these hours, right? So, and then we can do that our fixed and we can divide them by the hours here, okay? So, so um, and that'll give us our uh, predetermined overhead rate, right? So it's gonna be our um, cost, right? Our budgeted overhead dollars divided by our hours is what it's gonna be. It's all, it's all based on, our overhead's gonna be, is all based on hours is the way it works. Um, so, and it says right here, direct labor hours is based, right? Per direct labor hour. So that's gonna be uh, what we're gonna have. Uh, and one way to double check it is, it's also given up here, right? So this is gonna be, or what it's gonna be given. It's gonna be given to us. So we can do the calculations though, just to verify we have everything straight. Okay, and so what we're gonna do, it's actually gonna feed in to the bottom here for us, right? These, these rates that we're calculating will feed into the bottom. Our standard direct labor, uh, direct labor hours, now we're gonna have to, now we're gonna flex it, right? So we calculated all this stuff up, uh, number one, with 65% capacity um, utilization. Now the one at the bottom is, we're actually gonna say, okay, say we actually, uh, had an actual capacity use of 60%. So now we're gonna flex things a little bit and then find out the variance, okay? So our um, our rates are gonna be the same here for this first column. They're gonna fall down in, in there. Now we're gonna use our standard direct labor hours, okay? So our standard direct labor hours are gonna come up from up here. We're gonna use this 60% operating capacity and we're gonna come and plug take them from here, right? So that's gonna be 720. So we can plug those into there, 720,000, right? And our rates, whatever the rates are, so let's say, for example, they're gonna be 250 and 110. 250, oops, and 110, right? Which is a total of 360, right? Let's say that's gonna be them. And they're gonna drop down here, okay? So, so now what we do is we actually go ahead and multiply across. Okay, so we go ahead and multiply across. And so our 250 times our 720, right? Our, our 110, 1.10, multiplied by our 720, right? Everything's gonna be multiplied across. That, that will give us the overhead cost applied. Okay. And then our actual results are given to us from up here. Here's the actuals. So we plug the actuals in. We plug, pull them from there down to here and that will then give us variances to compare. Uh, and then, so from our variance, then we can say, okay, was that more cost or less cost than we had? If it's less cost, right, obviously it'll be favorable. That's awesome. If it's more than, then it'll be unfavorable. So, so good luck with those. Um, and we'll talk to you later. Have a good day. Bye.